Well, the uh, project for today is I've got some LEDs uh, for the uh, gauge cluster on my magnet here, and uh, we're going to swap out the old incandescent bulbs and put in some little LED cluster lights so it'll be a lot easier to see at night. And uh, it's pretty be should be pretty easy. The only trick is is that <clears throat> the uh, LEDs have polarity, so sometimes you got to swap them around the sockets to uh, make sure they come on. But uh, all right, let's crack on with it. Well, I got to get the back covers of my uh, my instruments off. They're just uh, chrome plated plastic, and to get more room to work, I'm gonna I'm gonna remove this uh, this headlight. Well, not completely. I'm just gonna tilt it out of the way. First, I'm going to remove the little reset button for trip odometer. And uh, you need a little tiny felt screwdriver for that guy. What I plan on doing here is I'm just going to loosen up the top nut. Bottom one, I'm just going to loosen up. Top one, I'm going to take out all the way. Make sure I don't lose my parts. So this three bolt should come right out. Now, tilt the head like down and out of the way. Just enough wire to get what I need going here. Alright, let's go on the cable off here. And just a pair of slip bolt pliers will do the job. Just to take it loose. And that nut just comes off. Alright, <clears throat> now I can finish taking these screws out. You know what? I wasn't thinking <clears throat> I'm actually making this harder on myself, but you can. There are two bolts that hold this bracket on here. You could take those dudes off. So, now we're going to take off these two bolts that hold the gauge cluster on. And they're just uh, 12, <clears throat> 12 millimeter bolts. It's kind of handy to have a uh, long handled ratchet here. Because it gives you plenty of room to work. You know, around the, the clocks. Yeah, that's loose enough right now. I need to get a cloth under the headlight <clears throat> so that when I take that loose, it doesn't bang on the headlight and scratch it up. Alrighty, let's get these bolts out. Really, <clears throat> these supers have this really cool silver wrinkle finish paint on the the, uh, <clears throat> the triple clamps, but the gauge one is all kind of flaking off and rusting. And uh, I got to respray this, but I'm not quite sure where to find silver wrinkle finish. Yeah, it's not easy to find. Black, yes. Red, yes. But silver, not so much. All right, so. Here's a good shot of what the triple clamps look like. And uh, you're the customizing kind. I'm sure you could easily put that underneath if you wanted to lower the, the height of your instrument cluster some. There we go. So, 
gonna feed the loom into the there we go chrome housing and uh, just so happens I brought two towels out so I could put one behind this housing alrighty so now I get access to the back of my clocks this frame here um, it needs to come off. It's kind of a reinforcement. These uh, the Speedo and Attack are kind of separate items, so it's real easy. Just these uh, these screws here, hold them on. So <clears throat> the real purpose of all this mess is. The LED bulbs, they're more expensive and they're harder to find. I had to order them from a website called superbrightleds.com and uh, I bought them. They didn't sponsor this video or anything like that. And <clears throat> the reason why I'm doing it is because the difference is huge. Um, even with new standard incandescent bulbs the LEDs outshine them significantly and it makes it easier to see your instruments in all kinds of lighting conditions so this, uh, this bracket comes off and uh, kind of just make a mental note of how all this stuff goes in there all right so the brackets off now we gotta take this one more screw out. It's holding the wiring loom in place. And uh, I mean, this kind of DIY really applies to the 80, 87 and 88 VF 750C uh, Honda Magna or the Super Magna, but you know, in general, bikes are gonna be pretty similar. Uh, some of them were even easier than this to get at access to the to the instruments. And that's about all the further I need to disassemble this. So we have these rubber plugs are where the lights live, and uh, <clears throat> these are what we're replacing them with. There, uh, I got one bag open here already. These are pretty much the standard base. A lot of bikes will have this type of bulb. And uh, this is a cluster array of LEDs. The regular incandescent bulb would just have a filament there, but the base is the same. The difference is, is that this is polarized. So if it doesn't work the first time, you just pull it out of the base, flip it around the other way, and push it back in, and it should light up. And uh, you, just, you have to test every one. <coughs> So, some of these I have already done, but you just grab the base on the Honda and you wiggle it and it pops right out. So, let's turn that dude on. See how bright that LED cluster is? And I mean, it's it's not hot to the touch at all and you don't want to use I mean you don't want your hands too grubby when you're doing this but uh, in it goes now most of these larger ones I've already changed because they were already burnt out but we do have a small one here let's get a little clip which we'll spread out right here and then this bulb so that light bulb works it still works well i think it works i actually don't know because it's so dim well looky there it doesn't work at all so pull that guy out now this is a different style bulb for the magna uh, you've got 
these two bulb sockets here on the, the tachometer use the same bulb and one here. So you need three of the larger style and I'm going to put the part numbers along with links to where I bought them so that if you have a, a magna you can change the bulbs out too. But this is like a smaller version of it. <coughs> Excuse me, these are all the cool white variety of this bulb. Um, you can get them in other colors and they're so bright that you can literally change the color of your, your bike. So I'm going to shove that guy in there like so. You see it fits the same base. That's our new LED bulb there. And I'm going to turn the ignition on and test it. And as you can see, it works. So it's in there right. However, if it was in there backwards, like that, and I go to turn the ignition on, nothing. So you can see that they're polarized. And actually, look at the inside of that guy right there. It's a resistor and a diode already in the bulb assembly. The main thing that applies to this procedure is that you need to test each bulb you put in because of the polarity. So, I did not put that back in the right way. I swapped it around and you can see that it comes on just fine. And so, this just pushes back into the slot. There are no bolts that hold these on the Honda. They are just rubber plugs that push in. Now we gotta do these guys one at a time. And this is the third style of bulb on the bike. And the housing is a little fiddly. Obviously you don't wanna drop anything. So just be careful, it should be fine. So, let's see. Pretty sure this one works. Which one was this? So that's my neutral light. And that's how bright that neutral light is with a standard incandescent bulb. Put my hand behind it there. You can see. Just what kind of light you get out of that. Now that bulb is probably the original one on this bike. So, you know, it's 20 plus years old. And there are five of these guys that go on the bike. Let me fight you a little bit. There we go. And like I said, we have to test every one of them. And see, look how much brighter that is compared to the incandescent bulb. Now it'll slot right into there and uh, it'll run cooler, it'll use less power, and it's not going to burn out. So four more to do. Also, we got turn, high beam, temp, and oil. Some of these lights, I might have to turn certain things on to get them to function so I can test. So the next bulb here, some of these you're going to need a needle nose plier and you're just going to have to be careful to not damage the conductors. There we go. And I believe that one is turn signal bulb. Well, it may be a little boring to do so, we're going to test every one of these dudes as I'm doing them. So. And all right, so you can see the turn signal works with the incandescent bulb. Pull that guy out. And let's see if I'm lucky the first try. A couple of these I got first try. They're not really keyed 
to let you know which way they got to go. So you just have to... Look at that. Aha! You run into a problem. We cannot use an LED for the turn signal bulb because the way Honda wires this bike, current is reversed through that socket. So it's not just on, uh, the polarization is flipped. That's okay, because I just so happen to have a couple of these guys spare now than the ones I swapped out. So on my bike, probably won't be able to go LED or the turn signal bulb. All right, so we got three more here. I believe the next one is going to be my, my oil light. Boy, that one's hot. <laughs> that is really hot. I haven't had the lights on them many times for it to get that stinking hot. All right, I'll give it a test. All right, that one's the wrong way. Flip it around. A little bolt socket. And it's on. Good deal. Now if you have problems with these, being really stuck on there and you want them to be able to come out easier in the future, you could put some dielectric grease on there um, on the little rubber plugs. Let's see what do we got left here. Temperature light and a high beam light. We'll do the temp light next. And it's stuck. So I'm not getting it up after it but pliers. easy upgrade for a bike. It draws less power. It's probably better for your charging system. Test this one. Oops. And it's on. Oh, it was on. Oh, that's right. It only temporarily comes on. Yeah, it should shut off normally. Here we go. All right, so I got the high beam bulb left. And I can button it back up. I've seen these rubber plugs at the auto parts store, so if you tear one, you know, it's just a push-in rubber plug. You could get it replaced. But if you just twist it while you're pulling out, should be fine. Pulling the plug out, that is. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Dirty pervert. <clears throat> All right, so this is our high beam light here. So let's get this guy to test also. Mission on. And hi. Hey, hey, look at that. So most of these I got the first try, which is lucky. So, put him back into his home. So that's it. Um, they just uh, get bolted back together, or screwed back together, everything. So I'd already replaced these three bulbs out. And uh, it was just a little one and then these five bolts, but we saw that the turn signal bulb I can't change out because <clears throat> it's not the right type. Uh, it can't be polarized is what I should say. It should be the, it should have the ability for the, the polarity to be switched because of the way the relay works for the flasher. And it's just a, uh, a relay for flasher, it's not a, a solid state unit. So. 
Let's get this guy back together, shall we? And putting it back together is exactly the opposite of the way it came apart. And uh, I think before I bolt the clock assembly back on the bike, I'll give it one last test. Make sure all my wires are in their little clips where they want to live. And we got this clip here, which I'm not convinced that should be there, but uh, it's the way Honda did it, so I'm putting it back together the same way. I need like three pairs of hands. And I mean pairs, like six hands. Two to record, two to work with, two to drink a beer with. <clears throat> All right, so I got to put these little guys here. And this is like a reinforcement beam, and it's also where the threaded captured nuts are that hold the back cover on. And they're just uh, little brass inserts that are molded into the plastic of the of the speedometer and the tachometer housing. And then there's a little rubber vibration <coughs> washer grommet. Grommet! They're the wrong trousers! <laughs> Friends of mine will get that joke. I swear, every time I say grommet, that's the first thing I think. Because yes, I have seen Wallace and Grommet. screws on the back. These are always fun to line back up. <laughs> like that. <clears throat> and I proceed to drop screws on the ground. This is why you should have a clean work area. tried this once before without removing the headlight or without loosening it and tilting it out of the way and it's a pain in the rear end. You are so much better off just loosening it up and save yourself the grief. It just tilts down out of the way and it's a done deal. Last screw. And I got some cleanup work to do this real quick. Let me clean it up and then I'll put it back on.
All righty. So, just thread these bolts in by hand here. I'm not going to tighten up all the way because I want to check to make sure that the steering stem has plenty of angle to move. Because that looks like a rat's nest of wires right there. And, uh, matter of fact, that can't be right. This wire here has got to be on top. I'm just going to go ahead and tighten this all the way up because that wire is not in the clip anymore. I didn't remember it being there, but I can tell you however the wiring is is the way it came from the factory because I am the only one who's done any real maintenance on this bike and uh, I'm sure there's torque settings for these, but Actually, no, I take that back. There are not. But I've got a small ratchet, and I can only put so much force into it, and uh, they're not going to back out. Alright, let's look at this mess again here. I believe this wire is always just set right on top of that mess. I don't think it's ever been in that clip. I think it comes back there. There we go. That makes more sense. And this wire goes back into that retaining clip. And then the headlight goes back into there. Alright. So. Thread this guy back up. Just a little snug. Don't need to ape on it. There. That's it. And the through bolt. The cool thing about this is that it really doesn't change Here's the part where I need multiple hands. The headlamp goes back in the same way it came out, so you shouldn't have to realign it. There we go. I just need to tighten these bolts back up. Alright. Some uh, 10 millimeter socket and box wrench here. I don't need to lean on these. They should tighten up pretty good. And last but not least, I'm gonna put the little reset arm back in for the tripodometer. Now, ah, it's keyed. A little brass uh, stem in there has got a D shape, it's got a flat side, and that keys into that. 
And do not over tighten that. <laughs> yeah, good luck finding one if you do. This one's already been broken once. It's got a crack on the side. There's still enough of it there to work. I don't know what I would do. If I lost it. There we go. And it works just fine. Time to test things out here. All right, any, <clears throat> anytime you take the, the harness or the headlight or all this stuff out, you should check to make sure the steering is going to work correctly. So you need to move it lock to lock. So that side's good. And I'll turn this to lock the other way and check. That is back the way it was. We're good. So I need to do one more check and I need to get the bike part way in the garage so I can do it. Okay. So I'm in my not so clean garage and time to test. Those are, oh, that is so much brighter. Um, let's do high beams, low beams, turn signal is just going to be the regular ball, but it's a newer one. But the uh, the lighting difference is monumental. I mean, it's just indescribable how how much brighter it really is. And the cool thing is, is this bulb down here uh, was completely burnt out, so. I can never see my trip odometer, and it was a goofy smaller version um, of your standard automotive dash light kind of bulb. But anyhow, job done. Excellent. I am quite pleased with that. That is incredibly bright. Um, I don't know how well it comes out in the camera, but uh, standing here, it's just there's no comparison. It was totally worth the effort, worth the expense. These are the three types of bulbs. And uh, I will put the part numbers along with where I got them and the part number for the LEDs. But this, there's only one of these. Um, that is the lower speedometer bulb. And while it looks very similar in size to the one above it, and they're both 12 volt, this one has a, a, different, uh, a different output. So, uh, in the socket's a little different too. It's a little narrower than these up here. These bulbs will not fit in here, but these bulbs will fit in there. <laughs> and they work just fine. Um, so you need one of these. You will need four of these, because remember the flasher doesn't work because it's, it's non-polarized. The current travels through the uh, bulb for the turn signal in both directions. And then this is the big guy, the cluster bulb. And the bike takes three of these guys. And uh, I, I will put in the, the notes the um, where I get the bulbs and uh, their part numbers and all that. So if you have a 87 or 88 Honda Magna, this is how you upgrade the dash bulbs to LEDs. All right, well, hopefully uh, everybody learned something. Uh, I will talk to you later.